It's almost Friday here at Kisetsu M and this time we will deal with a small mom bonsai, a Trident Mabel Acer Boerke Reanum that needs a repot and we have to find the right pot for it. I have a few here that we can choose from. The pots are in different colors and shapes and we will see both what fits in shape and in size with the tree. And uh, the temperatures have rised after the winter. We are in early spring still, but the temperatures are high enough so the roots begins to be active and you can see that by the leaf bursting out at this time as well. A little early this season, but we had an extremely mild winter and this is what happens. We still have a bit of cold in the night, but the freezing is, uh, has stopped, so I can bring the tree outside. We just have to remember that Triton maples are a bit more fragile than other maples, especially during the winter time. But now it's spring, and if we get any freezing, late freezing in spring, I will put it back inside for that night or two and bring it outside again, and it will cope fine with that, because now we are far enough into the spring season, the temperatures the average temperature is high enough to activate the roots so they will grow. Do never repot too early in the season because you will harm the roots. The tree is not ready for it. It has not sent up the stored uh, sugars and nutrients from the winter stored in the roots up to the branches. And it will be much too early to repot if you repot in, in February that I have heard some are doing. That will harm the tree more than necessary. It will be set back in growth, so just an advice. It's better, as always with bonsai, to be a little patient and wait doing things too hasty because you will get a drawback on that. But let's look at this uh, marmosized bonsai and how to repot that. Of course, it is a delicate procedure with such a small tree. We only have a few roots to work with in the end. If we want to squeeze it into a small pot like this, that will fit the tree, the size of this tree. But first of all, I would like to to uh, brush off this trunk because there's growing a little moss and uh, that is not healthy for the tree having moss on the trunk. It might air layer itself, it might set new roots on a place we do not want. I have to scrape that out, clean that up first. Then we can look into the roots and yes, this tree is not fast and secure enough because I'm able to do like this. It should have been anchored with wire, but we will certainly do that when we repot it. You will notice some scars here. That is because I cut it back last season to get it down in size, down to the marmot size. It has some larger, or in this scale, larger branches growing up here. Because maybe it was meant to be a, a little bit of a larger tree, but here I want to cut it back in marmot size because of that neat trunk. But first I will clean up the mosses here at the surface with a soft nylon brush so I do not harm the a little bit tender bark here at the trunk. As you can see, there are plenty of fresh roots. It's a very healthy tree. So it will be easy enough to cut them back. What is important is that those fine feathery roots, that there are enough of them close to the trunk so we can cut it severely back to fit it in the pot. I'll remove the training pot, a ordinary cutter-like clay pot with a good airflow used to grow this tree in, in the training stage. Then I use a primitive and cheap chopstick from some sushi meal to clean up some of that old Akadama soil here. And some of it is so soft now that it is beginning to be a problem for the roots to get air and oxygen enough inside and be well draining. Both because of the structure of the soil broken down, but, but also because the roots fills out this space. And that is the advantage of Akadama as a soil, that it starts being a little hard, 
Then, when roots begin to develop and grow in and break the soil, it will break into smaller particles and that will help divide the roots, making a very fine root system. And here I can feel some thicker roots we have to take care of. So we mainly concentrate on growing some of those finer roots as close to the trunk as possible. And the reason that I do not just cut it off and hope for roots being inside is that it would be too dangerous not to securely check how the root system is. It would be fast enough just to chop, 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 but then you risk removing some roots you might need for the survival of the tree. And let's see how small that tree actually is as we remove the soil, because we have a wider base here, here than I expected. And that's a good thing, but it can also be a challenge when we want to get it down in size. And all that fine feathery and light growth here is active new growth of roots showing it is the right time to repot and that is what we need. If we do it too early in the season, we risk those dying back because they do not like the cold early at the season. I've written a blog post about that. You can search for that. It is a recent post. Uh, where you can read about why you should wait repotting to this time of the year. So here we have a very good healthy root system. Now we need to frost it with a little bit of water so we can better see what's inside here. There are plenty of those fine roots sitting a little bit too high, maybe because it was put too far down in the soil, so it aerated itself up here being moist. So I remove those fine roots. We need those at the base, not up at the trunk. I will clean those wounds up after repotting. Before I do the repotting, I have to test which of those pots will fit with that tree. I have an idea that this is maybe a little too large, maybe not. My idea was wrong, it uh, seems to fit, but let's look at the other ones as well. Just to check it out, what will work best. This also isn't bad with the curve and line of the trunk, thinking about that. And then we have that small pot here that I actually thought was the right one, but it seems to be a little bit too small after all. Save that for another occasion. So the choice is between this and this one. And my choice will be this one from Elsabeth Ludwigsen. It's a very nice pot. Uh, I thought it was a little bit too big, so it's always about testing it in real and not just pre presume that something works. We have to test it to see if it works. I think this is a bit too narrow. It's a nice shape. It's a nice color, but still maybe a little too thin thinking about uh, the width of the pot. And that was what surprised me a bit with this, that the trunk was so wide at the base, it was not visible when it was growing in the training pot. Therefore I clean up the last bit here and make it ready to put in the container. Cleaning those small pieces of roots left, so we have a nice smooth trunk. The good thing about this pot is that the 
are wire holes inside it's many small shorn and marmot pots miss that feature and it can be a little tricky to arrange that wire and the drain hole is big enough as well i put a little bit of a mesh down here and the anchoring wire to keep the soil inside and then adding the anchor wire to the bottom here and up again to fix the tree and put in place. I use a relative thin wire here so I can put two wires around the tree so I'm sure it is stable. So a second one if my fat clumsy fingers will manage and then spreading them to the side so it's easy to fix the tree when we put soil in it and place the tree. Because I need that soil to be free draining at the same time as it holds water I use a semi-soft Akadana in a relatively small size. That will hold water well enough. Then I add a little of a home mixture of pumice and a tiny bit of, maybe you will sense it, of organic soil. That's a pH neutral soil that will help keep the water a little more than just adding Akadama and pumice. If it is too well draining, they will dry out too far, so I put a minimum of this inside too. Then I want to fix the tree and I look at where I have a feet pointing forwards here. I think that's ideal for this one. And then we can add the tree. Then choosing one feet to point forwards you can choose two feet if you want that. But I think with the lightness of this image it's better to have just one feet underlining that. A little bit slim and elegant but still a powerful trunk. We have to find the right angle. So we have some curving, a little bit of leaning to the right. The branch arrangement we will wait with for later. That's not so important at this time. The important is that it has the right curve, the right inclination, and will be healthy growing in here. So now I will fix the tree with the wires using my gin plier to tighten them up. It's important that a bonsai, no matter what size, never is able to rock in the pot. They have to be solid so the roots are not disturbed when you move them around, water them or in the wind. That's it. And then we can fill up with the rest of the soil still using this mixture of a little bit of organic soil, pumice for the top to keep that from drying out too fast. So we have a little rougher blend of Akadama in the bottom, then a medium sized grain with a little bit of organic pH neutral soil in the middle and the top. So we keep a free draining but still water holding soil. And when this is watered up, I will add a little moss at the top to prevent it from drying out too fast because it's a very small size of tree and that will happen easily during summertime. And it will help the roots to form here at the top. Remember, it's the first time we have put this into a small pot. Later, when the roots are more established, it will be easier to keep. Watering until it drips through the bottom of the pot. And never use your fingers to squeeze down the soil in between the roots. That will be harmful because you will squeeze the soil, especially when it's wet. Therefore we also use dry soils when we repot so it's not crossed and getting air or waterlogged when it is crossed by pressing it down. Here's a little root 
up here I can shorten and that will be it just adding a little mosses to finish it off and again don't mind the branches that is something we will work on the next seasons to come. That's it, almost Friday, the end of repotting a small mama bonsai. Now I'll clean up the pot, put the tree outside at the shelf, waiting for it to grow happily during the season, give it a good feed, and then slowly develop it, refine the branching, but we have to keep in mind this is a very small tree, it has to be below 10 cm or maximum of 10 cm, 4 inches to be a mama sized bonsai. But do not take that too rigidly and if it is exceeding a little then it is a showman. And by the way, who cares? <laughs> it's just as long as it is beautiful. If you need it to go into the mama category for an exhibition or competition or something else then you have to obey the rules. But else it is just a classification. So I look forward to developing that little piece over the next seasons, trimming it and refining ramification. Thank you for watching this little session with repotting a Asia Bulgarianum, a Triton Maple here at Kisetsuan at almost Friday. Thank you for watching.